Good morning. Good morning. Oh, wait a minute. It's noon. So it's, it's noon. Up. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I am Ben Andrews with the Seattle Film Summit and welcome to Filling the Void. This is my co-host, Ivan Wiener from AFMX. How's the weather over there in Albuquerque today? It is sunny and 70 degrees. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous weather. You always got to rub it in like that, don't you? I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, trying to send you. it your way, trying to send it your way. Well, you know, it's actually, interesting because Sunday it was uh, 70 something degrees and then overnight we wake up and it's snowing here in Albuquerque. It snowed all day. What? So, yeah, the weather, you know, we, we've seen snow through April and May sometimes. So, you know, it, it's still the land of enchantment. Um, all the weather patterns, you know, coming from the West, you know, affect us differently. But, you know, the high elevation, high desert, really gorgeous nonetheless so you know people were snowshoeing in the morning playing golf on tuesday after the snow cleared out but the mountain was beautiful and um yeah it was fantastic when i say playing golf i mean in their backyard sitting in the nets of course of course i have heard rumors of friends sneaking onto golf courses but i can neither confirm nor deny that yeah yeah I think everybody's itching to get out, but, you know, safety and health, number one, you know, forget about what, what's his name is saying, We're, that White House thing, that guy in the White House. I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, science should prevail over politics every time. <laughs> well, we do thank you for sending the weather this way, because believe it or not, I'm looking out the window, and I think it's close to 70 and clear skies in Seattle. And for all of you Seattle viewers, we know that we only get 90 of those days a year. So thank you for giving us one today, Ivan. Oh, anytime. Yeah, we have uh, over 330 days of sunshine a year. So yeah, we're happy to share. So I'm going to give out a shout out to uh, our Seattle sponsor today. And then Ivan, why don't you give a, a shout out to the Albuquerque one. So Absolutely. thank you uh, for Women in Film Seattle for being our sponsor this week. And we're excited to have their president, Lisa Hammond, as one of our guests on our second segment. So thank you, Women in Film. Yeah, and I wanna thank uh, Law Tigers New Mexico, uh, CJ Rodden, uh, and also John Agee, who had left Law Tigers to go work for Harley Davidson up in Santa Fe. Uh, instrumental in events that we've had at the festival the past year, and uh, Law Tigers, some of the best attorneys in the country and around North America in Mexico um, that just represent you know, injured uh, bike riders and the like. And um, they just do a fantastic job for community service, uh, uh, nonprofit support uh, with kids and veterans and the like. So big shout out to CJ and Law Tigers. Really appreciate all the support in the relationship. And then uh, another shout out real quick, just to our core team from both sides of the fence here that have really made this, uh, this, filling the void episode work and get up, get it up on its feet real quick. And that's Todd Conley. That's Marissa Fujimoto, Genevieve Trainer, Kira Sippler, Trina Griffin, Lynn Bohart. Who else am I missing, Ivan? You, me. You, um, me. I think that's it. So I think that's it too. Yeah. Um, so if this is your first time joining us, thank you for being here. Uh, filling the Void is just an opportunity for creatives to come together, talk about how we're being affected by quarantine and COVID. And as the world is shaping and shifting day to day, we don't necessarily have the answers, but we want to bring on all the people to talk about how they're coping and giving encouragement and, and explaining how they are filling the void. And, you know, it's really cool because the guests that have been on week to week have been creatives like Beyond Belief, whether they're filmmakers, musicians, uh, nonprofit directors, um, head of different film offices, music offices. I mean, we've had some really great shows and great information uh, disseminating. And today, I mean, we have some really cool guests on that are doing some great stuff uh, getting through COVID-19 in the quarantine. And um, we're going to bring them on, you know, starting with uh, Paul and Petra Ratner. Um, who are really phenomenal filmmakers. They know a lot of people nationwide and worldwide, contribute to the communities through film festivals, um, Sarasota Film Festival. Um, they run a youth festival um, in Europe. Um, 
you know, they, they just started the world's largest zombie movie that we're going to talk about. And then we're going to talk about a project of theirs called Moses on the Mesa, which started off as a short uh, and it's going to be turned into a feature and hopefully a television series as well. So, um, you know, without further ado, Todd, let's bring on our first guests, Paul and Petra Ratner, and let's talk about what they're doing uh, during the quarantine and how they're getting by. If they're here. Oh, they're here. Oh, they're here. Oh, they're here. There they are. Hi. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, welcome to Filling the Void. Can you hear us okay? Oh, they're connecting right now. Hello. Hi. Hey, yeah. good to see you guys. How's everything in Florida? Nice seeing you. Uh, no, it's fine. It's, you know, it's not bad. It's hot. <laughs> yeah. No, it is. What's the temperature there? So it's 70 here, 70 in Seattle. Uh, it's 80, 80 something usually lately. Yeah, it's been up to 90. I mean, today is actually a little bit cooler, but overall it's been nearly yeah. 90. When they say cooler, they mean like 86. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, we, we are quite responsive to cold here. <laughs> um, before we dive deep, I just want you to talk about what's behind you. Look at all this cool <laughs> artistic stuff. And yeah, no, really. You know, we have we have two small kids at home, so we had to retreat somewhere where we won't be bothered, which is into my studio. So those are my paintings behind. Yeah. We wanted to cover the fact that it's a garage, in fact. So <laughs> behind me, my paintings. Yeah. Is this okay for you? I mean, you don't mind that we're like this. Yeah. Looks fantastic. <laughs> I, love I love that painting right behind you guys. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, let's, let's dive into this, you know, Paul and Petra, I've known you for God, seven years now. And, um, you've been a part of AFMX, you know, with Moses on the Mesa, the short, um, but, you know, getting to know you over the years, what I've realized is that you are really enthralled and a big part of news, what's going on around the world and the film industry and the arts industry and the like. And, um, you know, one big thing, um, that we talked about was, um, you know, movie theaters, theatrical releases and distribution and things like that. What is your take on what's going to happen or what do you think is going to happen with that when it comes to um, when it comes to independent as well as, you know, big feature film studio projects? Right. Well, you know, for, for us, definitely uh, the, the virus has thrown us uh, all in, in <laughs> for a loop. But uh, on one hand, on the other hand, uh, it feels like maybe some of the things that are that will happen out of all of this are just structural changes that maybe the industry was already kind of headed towards, you know? So I feel like uh, from our standpoint, we of course rely on, you know, uh, putting on events and festivals, we rely on uh, with kind of a theater experience, uh, you know, and, and a lot of our audiences, especially the older audiences really enjoy that. They want to have this, you know, in theater kind of screening with, uh, with other people and with, uh, you know, with the filmmakers in attendance and all of that. But, uh, on the other hand, it really seems like uh, you know going online and going digital is an inevitable sort of uh, consequence of what is going on. And we are, of course, ourselves have really jumped <laughs> into it already. We are organizing uh, several online festivals and on online events, and we kind of definitely see a future in that. And we're trying to figure out how to duplicate the, what people like about being in a movie theater uh, online, if that's possible. Yeah, so with the online experience that you've had thus far, I know that I saw the announcement that Sarasota Film Festival is uh, going online. Um, is it uh, April 27th? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, April 27th from May 3rd is uh, our first uh, ever Sarasota Film Festival online. And, you know, of course, it's a, it's a festival of 22 years. And so it's the first time it's going to present uh, anything online like this. Yeah. And who are you, what company are you using? Because I know I've been contacted by a lot of different companies wanting to take AFMX online. What company are you using? Uh, we're using Eventive, Eventive Virtual Festival. Okay. Uh, we, we've been uh, contracted with Eventive for a long time uh, just to sell our tickets. And we've always enjoyed that experience working with uh, Edo. Uh, and uh, they've kind of built out a system that is very competitive and that works really well compared to and we definitely, you know, did our homework and shopped around and talked to a lot of different uh, providers. And uh, we're kind of happy that uh, Eventive was able to put this together. And we're, you know, really putting it to a test right now. We're going to uh, utilize not just the streaming platform that they have, but also the live features. And that's sort of a, that, that to us is something where we could 
really maybe bring out a part of a regular festival experience and put it online. You know, so that'll be with like panels, workshops and the like? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about, thanks for that information, but let's talk about what you've been doing to keep busy during the quarantine <laughs> and keeping other people engaged as you always do. Um, there's this big uh, revelation past several years about zombies and zombie movies. So mm -hmm. let's talk about the world's largest zombie movie. <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit about Yeah, so well, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, it is uh, something close to our hearts. We've, uh, we, are, we have two little boys uh, f that uh, one is almost five and one is 10. And uh, we organize a lot of educational events and educational, even film festivals. Uh, the, the part that we organize uh, is always partially, partially uh, educational as well. We teach film camps and we were like, well, what to do? We are at home. Our kids are stuck here with us at home let's do something to entertain them and uh, let's try to see how to entertain um, them all <laughs> meaning all the kids stuck at home and uh, together with our boys we came up uh, with uh, the idea for the world's largest zombie movie where uh, we have uh, waves of filmmakers uh, that sign up we have uh, different type of waves of deadlines for the filmmakers to sign up and we sent uh, every Friday, we sent uh, the new wave of filmmakers. Those are kids, K to 12. Uh, we send them assignments that they can choose from and therefore contribute by them filming the assignment to the world's world largest zombie movie. Did I say it right? Cool. Right, no, it's basically in a really long film that's kind of put together by different kids and we are sort of uh, in charge of this. We're, we're the ringmasters, you know, but, but we are, allowing the kids to be very creative. We're giving them different scenarios and they are, I know, signing, uh, sending them in. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, things that we've already seen like, that are quite fun and creative. You know, we have, uh, at the moment, we have 250 registrations from about uh, 12 countries. You know, so there's a lot, and we're, you know, hoping to get the word out. It's sort of, uh, a lot of kids sign up and of course, you know, some can film more, some can film less. So we're, we just want to kind of keep it going for now. And then, uh, on uh, May 1st, we will premiere uh, chapter one of this, uh, this saga, the zombie saga. Uh, and then I think there'll be other footage that'll end up in another chapter and we'll kind of keep adding to it. So, I mean, I, 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 we'll see how long it can really get. <laughs> I, I think it's fantastic. I know that I received the invitation and thought I'd have the time with the kids to do it. I mean, they're really busy with their schoolwork and the like, but we're gonna try and hop on for you know, one of the Fridays and try and do something over a weekend where we can film something quickly and get it to you guys. I think it's a fantastic idea. And, you know, I just shook my head smiling when I first saw it because I'm like, leave it to Paul and Petra, you know, to do something. <laughs> because, I mean, you all are very active with your kids when it comes to the arts community in general and education. So I think this is a really great time for families worldwide to really take in what's happening with their children while they're at home with them. Right, no, definitely, you know, for, for us, like uh, we've really tried to think about like, what can we do to to use this experience in sort of for the best, obviously an unfortunate time for many of all of us, you know, especially in the arts community, you know, kind of all of our events are canceled. <laughs> so we, yeah. what to do, you know, and that uh, be beyond looking forward to the future being with kids, I think it's very, it's been great. Like we've been able to, you know, in, in, for the smaller one, we are able to teach him re to read, for example, during this period, you know, so mm -hmm. it just feels like, you know, there are some, some you know, good things that maybe can come out of this. So are you guys still taking filmmakers for this? And if so, where can we drive traffic? World's largest zombie movie.com. Everything is there. We're, it's, a, it's an ongoing registration. Uh, please register and have fun with us. Right. Mm -hmm. We have already quite a lot of great scenarios we came up with. And uh, one one of our sort of big twists that we're, well, we have a couple of twists in the overall story, but uh, one of the big things is that we're doing a lot of uh, stuff from a zombie point of view, kind of taking a non-human, uh, you know, kind of interest. <laughs> so like, you know, because a lot, yeah, a lot of it is just yeah. zombies are mindless kind of like, you know, uh, monsters essentially that attack you. But you know, what if you were, you know, turning into a zombie and you still had some humanity left and, you know, mm -hmm. there is, there is, or, or you, you know, this part of you was struggling, you know, to come out. So, you know, anyway, that's something fun that we're uh, bringing into this. And also what kids have been doing, which is fun, is kind of recording emotional scenes, you know, which we also brought into it kind of from, uh, stolen a little bit from uh, many years of watching Walking Dead, you know, where mm -hmm. they, 
where the characters for some reason stop the action and just turn to each other and have long drawn out emotional moments. And so, <laughs> you know, we are kind of bringing you know, we, we, uh, we know that Norm Reedus has, has a child or two now. Uh, maybe we should try and reach out to Norm and see if he'll film something to be oh, in the yeah. movie. Oh, that would, that be, would cool. be amazing. Yeah, we okay. tried to reach out uh, a little bit to Walking Dead people, but uh, not to him. He would be, that, would, that would be great. Oh, were you guys already planning this and then you just adjusted it for quarantine? Or was this something that you've come up with in the last month and a half? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's just, just an idea that we had recently, you know. Oh. It just, we, we just, we were just, it was the first week that, well, basically Sarasara Film Festival got at that point postponed or canceled. That was mm -hmm. Friday mm -hmm. and we came up with this maybe by Monday, yeah, you know, no just kind of like, hey, we're going to be stuck at home for a month or so, maybe right. longer. Let's do something creative or these guys are just right. going to be playing Roblox, you know, you, all the time. <laughs> right. You already still... have 200 filmmakers. Is that what I heard? Over yeah, 250. We have over yeah. 250 and we've been featured in a lot of different sort of press outlets and uh, you know it's for, it's free to register we're not uh, you know making any money on it it's just a kind of a fun community filmmaking event you know that uh, uh, and you know everyone sort of loves zombies I think to some extent. <laughs> Everybody relates to zombies whether it's just metaphorically or literally. <laughs> exactly. I mean, of course, there is a certain viral, you know, context to all of this, but we're, we are not necessarily focusing on that for us. It's just a way for kids to kind of keep occupied and do something fun and simple with film. You know, we're not uh, belaboring the virus uh, part of it. You know, it's just a fun filmmaking thing. Well, I, I have to say that, you know, out of many people that I know, the two of you are some of the most creative people I know and hardworking and not afraid to, you know, take that leap to make something happen. And, um, you know, I think everybody watching today and that we'll see, you know, the recording of this later, you know, can learn a thing or two about, um, you know, not just during the COVID AD time period, whatever, whenever we get back into the public, but, you know, throughout life, you know, take advantage of opportunities and make things happen. One more thing I want to talk about, but we want to bring the next guest in too, because mm -hmm. that could be part of the conversation, uh, is Moses on the Mesa. You know, I, I was introduced to Moses when it was a short film uh, that played at the festival 2014, I believe. And, um, you know, I just thought it was a phenomenal story. You know, Jewish immigrant from Germany comes to New Mexico of all places. Mm -hmm and ends up becoming the governor of Acoma Pueblo, you know, first non-native to become a governor of a Pueblo. And um, all the trials and tribulations, you know, with um, the native community, Mexican community, the mob that was out here trying to control the railroad system and textiles, you know, where were things, you know, with Moses on the Mesa? And, um, you know, let's just talk a little bit about it, how you came up with the concept and the like. Yeah, no, thank you for, for bringing it up. It's a project that's sort of dear to our heart and we've been uh, working on it already for a number of years, as you know. Uh, you know, the, the initial idea stemmed from us and we used to live in New Mexico. We're now in Florida, but we used to live in uh, Albuquerque and, uh, you know, New Mexico stories have always been very close to us. And we one day ended up on the top of Acoma Pueblo, in fact, and heard the story from a guide there. Uh, so it was sort of from a, from you know a, a real source, and then we uh, you know started to investigate, and, and we were just amazed that there's such a unique, real life based story out there. Uh, you know, we really fell in love with it. We won uh, a fellowship uh, to produce a short film, uh, which you know a number of organizations supported, uh, in, uh, you know, the Foundation for Jewish Culture, but also we got a lot of uh, uh, support from the Native community. We got a lot of great research. Uh, you know, that was very first hand. And, uh, you know, after making the short, we've been really focused on, uh, you know, it's such a larger story and we've been focused on turning it into a feature in a TV series and, uh, you know, are at various stages of both of these uh, endeavors. But we've had a lot of uh, great interest, uh, certainly from a lot of uh, studios and uh, sort of top people. I think the story resonates with many. So we're really hoping to uh, to kind of place it soon and to go into production of, of Moses and the Mace of, uh, you know, the, the much larger version. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> and it's, uh, of course, there's more information about the short and the short itself on mosesandthemesa.com. Uh, so if one could see the trailer for the short. I mean, the, the story itself is just, uh, it involves, uh, you know, not just 
uh, this kind of unique human story of these you know kind of cultures coming together but there is a there's just a much larger context the, the story of the people that are involved kind of spans you know a really interesting period of american history kind of especially as it pertains to the wild west the whole territory kind of going from wild from being this like lawless land to becoming uh, eventually part of america you know, and kind of the story goes all the way until it becomes a state you know and so uh, you know and of course that area was very well known for you know famous wild west heroes you know like billy the kid and, and geronimo was sort of in that area and they're all part of our story as well because the you know the characters that are involved they were merchants who moved around between different worlds and that's sort of what's interesting about it to us they were able to be kind of in the settler world and then go into a lot of the native communities and they knew a lot of the local languages and so kind of being the in, be in between people they they participated in this really you know amazing very large kind of story of america that's great well we appreciate the time on being on filling the void i i can honestly say you two have really filled a void for a lot of people worldwide and um you know we invite you to stick around while we bring lisa on and um you know thanks again you know once again um world's largest zombie movie.com um if you want to get your kids or family involved in being part of a zombie movie. I think it'll be pretty cool when it's done. So thanks for all that you do, Paul and Petra. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you for Ivan. having us. Thank you, Ivan and Ben. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So it looks like we are about to be connected to Lisa. Lisa Hammond is uh, a set designer. She's a production designer. She's also the president of Women in Film Seattle. And- Oh, there she is too. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. Hey, the last, the last thing I was going to say here, she's also the chair of the Gender Equity Committee for the um, local IOTC 488. Isn't that correct? Uh, correct? That is, yes, it's the Women's and Gender Equity Committee. And uh, that's doing some, hi everyone, that's doing some amazing efforts right now for um, creating, they've organized a huge team of people fabricating maps and PPE and having them distributed to our <laughs> essential workers and um, the, including the UFCW21, which is our grocery workers, as well as um, retail health care. And they need, if you're interested, if anyone is interested in being a part of this extremely well-organized effort, you can find information on the Women in Film website on our Partners in Events page. And we need your help. They need 20,000 masks. And thank you. Thanks for having me, everyone. Glad to have you here. That's uh, been one of the inspiring things for me during this time uh, is all of the creatives. And I know that, so I personally live in a couple of communities, not just the film community, but the, the comic book convention community. And there's cosplayers mm -hmm. and uh, who are taking their 3D laser printers and making masks and sewing masks. And it's, it's been really cool to see how creatives are logistically supporting the healthcare industry right now. It's the, my colleagues are driven and they're driven by inspiration and it can come from anywhere. And sadly we're inspired by something horrid right now. Um, it's gonna continue and there's a lot of levels of involvement, starting with personal involvement and taking care of yourself so you can help someone else. Um, mm -hmm. But my colleagues, uh, 48, 887, and 15 are the local unions um, with our members, a few members just started on their very own, just diving right in and digging into their stockpiles of fabric and making masks and it's grown and and i and it makes me very hopeful um because we are in this together some of my colleagues are writing some are sequestered some are gardening everyone seems to be cooking <laughs> i think the heartfelt compassion that is really spreading from the Seattle region because it was one of the major hotspots to begin with and seeing the community like yours come together to do for other industries 
is, is absolutely amazing. I think that's a message that needs to be out there, you know, the compassion and everybody doing for others, you know, so thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for, for everyone that can find it within themselves to be a part when and how they can, because. So you've spoken about your colleagues. How are you personally holding up and what are you doing to fill the void? Ben, I am, I've got a list. I'm a little OCD. Anyone that's worked with me knows that. And I'm also very anxious. So I'm trying to find some structure in my daily life, um, making sure I'm up and everything's, my sweetheart of 26 years is really good about being t- being on a, st- on a schedule, but I'm not, unless you're paying me to be somewhere at 6 a.m., I'm probably not gonna be anywhere except in my bed at 6 a.m. So that's a challenge for me. Um, I'm Like you said, it's, it could be 65 today. It's sunny in Seattle and it makes everyone's spirits lift. Uh, I've been outside. I'm blessed to have a tiny garden. Um, and I also have a lot of, there's home things obviously, but I have a box of over, a film from that my grandfather shot in the early 1900s. And I'm not quite sure the format. It's, it's not four by five, but it's all negatives and I'll be, um, we're set up to digitize it. Um, it's, it's, um, it's, we'll have historical content. Um, it's, it's not family driven, it's travel driven. And apparently my grandfather may or may not have been a citizen of the United States at one point or another, but he was also born in Canada. So he came down as a lot of Canadians did through, I think, Michigan. And so there's, there's beautiful portraits of all kinds of people from, in, uh, that live in shacks, that are wearing top hats, that are driving fancy automobiles and train tracks and tra- trains and horses and wagons with giant wheels and tents on the top. So it's 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 quite, it, there's a lot of content there. And um, so that'll be a pro, that, that's a process that'll be ongoing. That's something. And I'll share it. <laughs> As you should. Actually, you spoke to Paul and um, Petra. I think that um, those, and even you, Ivan, those of us with children, littles, mm-hmm. even though they're not in school right now, I've, I've had this thought that I think we almost have an advantage because we are forced into a, a daily structure. We still have, we have to self-educate them. We have to give them a schedule. And so I have actually thought, man, my, my friends who don't have kids in the house right now, God, they must be going crazy. And I know they're going crazy because my in-laws call us every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're lucky though. They've got recipe tips and <laughs> the latest, um, you know, asking for advice, how to get into that Netflix account. And <laughs> it is, I think um, those of us without children really well, not, I can't speak for everyone. I can only speak for myself. Um, I've got a neighbor who's, um, uh, he's a pastor, uh, a pastor, and he works at Children's Hospital. Um, He's a volunteer. And he's, um, he's over 70. And he lives alone. And he's extremely creative. He's also a, a aromaphile he goes to Italy twice a year so right now his world is completely um, without structure he can't go in to give his comfort and support to children with illness um, and their families on a daily basis he can't touch people he can't go to Italy Um, he but he can draw he can garden and we on our block we call where we live banner island because we're surrounded by we're cut off by three arterials including um 520 uh and so 
there's only 13 houses on the block, 11 actually. And, but we all rally together as an island and make sure that we are all right. And especially our, our friend, um, you know, making sure that he knows he's surrounded by love and, and we throw pine cones at him. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Over the fence. Gotta do something. We do. Um, I want to, uh, there are other things, you know, one of our women in film is going to be partnering with the Couchathon team mm -hmm. um, coming up. So our monthly events, our signature events, and I just have to say that this is our 30th year as a nonprofit, which is 30 years. That's a long time. Um, but so we're moving into uh, doing our signature second Tuesday events live as well. And we just had our first this week. And so it's the, sec the second Tuesday of every month. And one of those coming up will be partnering with Couchathon, um, which is, um, which will be working with, um, not City Arts, um, someone prompt me here. I need, a, I need a prompter and an admin over here giving me, feeding me names. Like, <laughs> not with Arts, that's a movie. But they're working with a nonprofit um, to take donations for. I'm not really prepared to, to speak to this. I'm going to have to read it. Then you can speak to it. Well, I mean, I, I can't, but I can fake like I can. Uh, okay. Is the Northwest Film Forum, is that their fiscal sponsor? And for arts and culture. Oh, no, the Uluama. Oh, Maybe Ivan would be able to speak to that. Oh, Ivan. Oh, I caught you off guard. And I would be able to speak to it mm -hmm. up in the Pacific Northwest, um, possibly with Doreen from for, forculture.org. Sure. Doreen. Yeah, I mean, oh. I'm lost here. That's okay. <laughs> My fault. I took you into a bit, sir. I'm sorry. You don't have to have the answers because we'll get those and we'll put them in the description of this video. I love that. I have to say, I have to say to Paul and Petra that I, I think your Moses on the Mesa, it, to me is beautiful and it looks like a love story um, to New Mexico. And I'm looking really forward to seeing it. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. It's we love New Mexico it's, uh, and we love, uh, the, you know, the people who live there and the stories that, that, you know, Kind of bubble up from the ground there. It's, 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 a it's great gorgeous, place. and the cinematography is is um, top notch. It really is. It, I I haven't seen the full length short, but I have watched a trailer a few times, and it was really it's it's top notch. Thank you I, so I'm much. Forward to seeing it. It's beautiful. Sure. I'm wearing this in your honor. <laughs> See your beautiful. Oh, thank you. Wow. Yeah. And Lisa, you know, I, I commend you for what you do with women in film and the unions and the like. Um, you know, we have a really strong union here and a New Mexico mm -hmm. women in film. And mm -hmm. uh, we are always open to collaboration. So, you know, filling the void, we're trying to bring the cultures and communities together. And, um, you know, your sign of friendship and wearing that necklace alone is really cool. I noticed it right away and was going to ask you about it. So, um yeah, thank you. We look forward no. to working with you in the future. Uh, it would be our pleasure. We've got some. We've we've got a roundtable coming up in a month or so. So we'll definitely reach out. Thank you. Okay, certainly. Yep. My my brain is already wrapping around how in the future world how we ally with Albuquerque with our productions. So there'll be more to come on that. Oh yeah. <laughs> but. Um, I think we have a question in the lobby. Uh, Todd, our voice of God, can relay it to us. And I think it's going to apply to Paul, Petra, and Lisa. I'd love to hear your input on that. Yeah, well, I, well, one question that came up uh, for Paul and Petra was, are, are there standards for the equipment or the quality for submissions as far as the project goes? Uh, you know, the, the zombie film, uh, we are encouraging uh, kids to use uh, whatever is available. Uh, definitely, you know, cell phones are totally fine. Uh, we're actually uh, even partnered with a, a company called Basilev's Entertainment, which makes uh, films in a format called Screen Live. 
films like Searching or Unfriended, basically films that take place on device screens. And so we are encouraging kids to think of uh, devices that are available as a storytelling tool, because you can tell a story, you know, not just by pointing the smartphone somewhere, but also just through the apps even. You can, you can even capture somebody you know, texting someone or you know, getting some sort of picture and that already could be a part of your story. So there's you know, definitely ways to make your story interesting without leaving your home. Awesome, and we have just a lot of love for Lisa in the chat. A lot of people saying hi, giving some shout outs <laughs> there. Hi. <laughs> Lisa is one of our most beloved figures in the film industry in this town. I, th I think the other feedback for the rat nurse was along the lines that they would love to know how your experience goes with this platform you're choosing for, to use for the, for the uh, experience itself. So may, maybe they're asking you to create a blog or create your own YouTube videos, kind of reviewing the platform, but that's of interest to the audience here. Right now, we're, we're, it's a little bit, of course, of a new venture. You know, we don't really know how it will go, but we we think that there are certain advantages, even possibly, you know, to, to screening films digitally. We're definitely going to try to figure out how to make it more interactive, and I think that's a big part of it. I think that maybe maybe we can, you know, do something which you cannot even get in the normal uh, experience, you know, in a movie theater. We're also thinking of using the platform for kind of like a monthly film club type screening. So we'll see how that goes. So uh, Lisa, we'd love for you to stay. You're, you're not bound to us for the rest of this hour, but we'd love for you to stay. And we have uh, a really exciting treat uh, with our next guest. I think it's Elena. I'm not even gonna butcher her last name, but she is a filmmaker and a producer from Greece. I, I believe she lives in Athens and uh, she's joining us now. There she is. Hey. How are you? Hi. <laughs> Lena, can you pronounce your last name for this ignorant American? Riovolo. Riovolo. Did I mess? I butchered it, didn't I? <laughs> it's good. It's good. <laughs> I want to come to Europe right now and Greece. Oh, um, just by the way, you said the last name. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my last name actually means light. Hi. <laughs> hey. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. It's it's lovely to be here. Thank you. Thank you so Priovolu, yeah. <laughs> Priovolu. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the invitation. So, so just, um, I know that I, I can speak for myself. I'm Greece. <laughs> I can speak for a lot of people that before the, the oh. massive wave hit us, we were just looking in the news and seeing what was happening in Greece. No, there's something wrong with my audio. Oh no. How about, can you tell us what's going on in Greece right now? And yeah, Elena, I think you have the YouTube playing up? in the background. Okay. There's something going on with my audio. I can hear my. Oh yes, yeah. turn the uh, turn the YouTube sound off in the background. Okay. Now go. I think I am in sync with you guys. Hello. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we would just love to hear what's going on with you, how you're coping over there in Greece, and and kind of what the landscape is. Well, listen, because we started locking the country down really early, uh, things are really well right now. Um, we, only, we only have 100 people who have, um, you know, passed away because of the disease. And we have like a couple of thousand cases, which I think is one of the smallest numbers around. And we are very happy about that. Of course, we're very sad with everything that is happening in general in, in the world because it's affecting all of us, no matter where we are. Uh, but we're looking, we're feeling quite positive, and I think that in the next couple of weeks, things will start loosening up for us slowly, slowly. Of course, this is also quite dangerous because we uh, saw the Singapore um, doing exactly the same thing, and now their numbers are rising. So. Uh, releasing the crowds from the lockdown is also one more challenge that we need to be very, very careful about. 
Uh, in the meantime, we're in lockdown. We're all, all working from our houses. Those of us who are lucky enough to work at least because the people who are doing uh, productions on set are not working, which is quite um, um, frustrating for all of us <laughs> and how things will unroll in the future. Uh, but we are um, uh, positive in a, you know, in a serious way, I don't know, in a you know, um, cool manner, we are positive and optimistic about what's coming ahead. How have you spent your time, uh, you know, since all this began and you went into lockdown? Um, have you been able to get production work done from your house? Well, I am one of the lucky ones because I am, uh, as I'm leading the international production services department of the company, I can work from my house, uh, like my house is my office basically in these days. And I do a lot of communication with producers from uh, around the world who are showing their interest in Greece. They were showing their interest in Greece anyway, but now because of uh, the situation in Greece, which is quite stable and safe, I feel that there is even more uh, interest to see what's going on here. Uh, so I'm doing my communications every day. We are developing a few projects. We are breaking down and budgeting and uh, we're in discussions and we're also writing. So for me, it's a very, very busy period. Thank God for that. Because <laughs> I really, I really uh, wouldn't want to be uh, locked down and not really you know, having things to do that concern around our business that would not have been very pleasant. Uh, but for me, it's okay. I've been, I mean, I work every day, all day. I do several things and I can do some writing now, which I didn't have the chance to do before, which I all will also enjoy very much. And yeah, and in general, we're trying to be, uh, we're talking a lot of people every day on the phone, messenger, exchanging information, exchanging uh, what's going on in the world. and. We're trying to, uh, you know, maintain our um, positive uh, view of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like zombies? <laughs> yeah, but as you were talking about the zombie thing, I said, well, I, sh I should appear like a zombie right. <laughs> on the screen. And do something like because it's really I, I'm a big fan of zombie films and and I, I was also thinking that um, Lisa and uh, I'm sorry I don't remember your names and these lovely people who are doing the zombie <laughs> thing you're being so creative because you can actually do something in this era that we're going through and we are just a production company we, you know uh, there's not we don't have a network that we can actually use online or whatever. But it's a lovely idea. And now that I heard of it, because I didn't know about it, I will sit down with some friends and see what we can do about it. Because it's really, really exciting. And it is actually a zombie world right now, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Zombies are ruling the world. Yeah, no, it's, you know, it feels like it's, you know, there's not often moments in time where everyone in the world is affected by the same thing and is more or less on the same page about it. You know, so. That is, that is one, yeah, one phenomenal uh, period for all of us, indeed. It's a very, uh, yeah. No, I was going to say that's interesting, Paul, that you bring that up because, yeah, there's so many different things that affect everyone worldwide you know, in normal life, you know, whether it's health or finances or whatever it is, this one virus is affecting us all, period. You're Ooh, right. Thought. Absolutely right. I, read, I mean, I uh, I'm sure that right now in the world, there are several filmmakers out on the streets trying to capture the emptiness of the streets, which is like, like never before and hopefully never will. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep our fingers crossed on that. And it's really a magnificent um, thing to see, like such crowded streets, like nobody's walking on them and there's nothing happening except for cats and dogs and squirrels and I don't know what. It's quite um, interesting to um, observe. So is the government there like really on top of this to make sure that they can reduce and flatten that curve? I mean, the government's really, really yeah. compassionate yeah, yeah, yeah. for the people on this. You know, I think that this also was also um, like a bet for our us Greeks because our reputation internationally was not the best uh, the last few years with all the crisis and everything that uh, was going on in our country. And I think this is a through an, a very unfortunate, unfortunate event. It's a fortunate thing for us to show to the world that we can actually handle our stuff. 
and we can be organized and tackle things mm -hmm. and come together and produce a very positive income for us and and that has been something um, that we quite um, appreciate and i think the government was very very um, right to act as fast as possible and produce this type of result yep so and i hope i hope that this thing will really disappear from our lives or we make it disappear somehow and we go back to normal because um, I, I read a lot of articles and a lot, a lot of discussions about what is the future of our industry after we return from the lockdown and how things will be um, shaped on sets and how the production is going to um, manage this distance thing that we need, the social distancing that we need to maintain. And as far as Greece is concerned, right now we're trying to pass a, um, a protocol of hygienes, hygiene in the next era of how things should be on sets and how the crews should behave and the masks and the gloves and the testing hopefully and maybe smaller crews and these things uh, this is being shaped right now and see how we're gonna um, face the next the next day uh when productions where productions are concerned there is a great article um that came out and got pushed out to um my IOTSI 48, but the deadline, Hollywood News had a great article on the about reopening Hollywood and what that really will, could look like. Um, the challenges are not insurmountable, yeah. but, but the challenges, but they, they will exist and they'll probably evolve those challenges and they'll be uh, overall where they're, in the United States, we, I can see us getting started first. We're prepared, we're organized. Mm -hmm. the, the unions in the industry, the, our workers are incredibly professional and organized and dedicated. And yep. safety is tantamount to how we do what we do. So I think um, this article is great though. Um, um, yeah, I read it. It's, it's quite, it's quite it's, interesting. Yeah. How did you feel about that? What, did, what was your take, Ellen? I, I, I actually um, felt quite positive uh, reading it, quite optimistic in the sense that there are solutions that are, are on the works. And mm -hmm. one main, main concern that we've had is the insurance companies and how they're going to react to what is happening and how they're going to insure the, you know, the crews and the actors and everything. And they had a very interesting idea that they're going to have a bullet on their contracts that uh, we, we insure everything, but uh, if uh, something happened COVID-19 related, then we will not be able to cover that. And I say, okay, I mean, if that is what it's going to take for us to go back on set, and then so be it, you mm -hmm. know? And in general, I, was, um, I felt, I felt uh, okay after reading it. And there was also, yeah, there was also a comment about the productions going abroad and if that is going to change because it's something that will certainly affect us because we are attracting productions from abroad to come and shoot in Greece. And we were all concerned if it's going to stop, if it's going to continue. And they were saying that because of the low costs of shooting abroad, it will continue. It will not affect um, mm -hmm traveling around Europe or other parts of uh, Bulgaria or Romania or other parts of the world that uh, movies were being filmed. So it, it will continue to happen, which is great. <laughs> At least that uh, thing that I read on Deadline was quite um, soothing for me. <laughs> so I was curious if you could just give us a little bit of a, you could be our uh, European reporter. We know Italy, you know, got hit really hard. Yeah. Uh, sounds like you guys, uh, bottle it up pretty quickly. How have you, some of your neighbors, like like Bulgaria and Albania, like do you, have you heard much from? What's you know going they're on? doing all very well. All our neighbors are doing very well. Um, one thing I think that we have in common is that we don't travel as extensively as the other European countries. <laughs> like uh, France, Italy, Spain, uh, um, the Netherlands, you know, traveling and commuting 
for these countries is very much part of their lifestyle and networking and business uh, trips and such. I believe that Greece and Bulgaria, Albania, we don't really do those things. You know, we are most traveling for tourism, mostly. We're not so much connected with the rest of the world professionally, which is not a good thing, but at, at this particular point in time, it, I think has something to do with it. Oh, you're yes, muted on. I was gonna say you're connected to Seattle, Washington. Yeah and Albuquerque, New Mexico now. Yay, so. <laughs> that's amazing. You're part of the family. So. I mean, yeah, it's very exciting. Mention, it's interesting when you talked about, you know, filming in different areas and traveling and, and um, different productions coming in and out um, of different countries, because I think there is going to be a lot to consider there. And you know, it's not just for the film industry. You know, we, we've been talking about, and we like to bring music into this aspect as well. So, um, you know, we've talked about, um, how this is going to affect the music industry also, um, yeah. because I mean, think about live nation and all the major promotion companies. I mean, they're going to lose billions of dollars probably on canceled tours, rescheduled tours and the like. And, um, you know, with, with everybody on right now, let's bring one more guest in. Uh, I think it's our final guest for the day. Um, ben, um, Robert Mason, he's the lead singer for the rock band Warrant. And Robert, how you doing, brother? <laughs> Welcome. Glad to be here. Hey, man, how are you? Doing all right. How's everybody else? We're Good, doing Robert. Great. Yeah. Yeah, so our, our new friend and family member, Elena, she's in Greece, and she was just talking about um, film productions and going into different countries and traveling and the like, and, you know, what that's going to look like after, you know, things are clear. And I mentioned that the music industry in particular, for bands that are touring and, you know, not just in the U.S., but worldwide, you know, you, your career with Warrant and other bands has taken you around the world. So, I mean, what do, what do you think this looks like on the music end? <laughs> it, it formerly did, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Up until very recently. Yeah, who knows? I mean, we primarily, as you know, Ivan, are not a get a tour bus and go tour around domestically kind of band. It's all fly dates now. It's 99% it's commercial flights. So, and, you know, we still do a little ground travel in between if we can link a, a bunch together, but it makes it so much easier for us or has in the past just to do that. You know, it's, it's, it's our best route is to go and, you know, get on, get on planes, fly around. So that and being around in front of people is kind of my job, you know, meet and greets and all that kind of stuff. So this is like forced retirement right now. <laughs> In a way, in a sense, I mean, you know, I, I still have a nice collection of vintage instruments and a fun, but you don't get to do it for anybody. And performing is my first, probably my first love. Absolutely. On my side of a microphone, in front of a bunch of people in a crowd is, you know, meet and greets, all that stuff that we've grown so accustomed to at a part of our show our schedule, our life, and our income is on hold. So, you know, obvious, I'm stating the obvious, but, uh, but yeah, what is this going to be like? As almost anybody's guess, I think, and what I'm hearing more often than not, and Ivan, you and I were kind of discussing a little bit, I know chatting the other day, it's going to change people's habits. It's going to, probably elicit a certain amount of cultural change. Uh, maybe this makes us a little more careful. Maybe this makes us a little more apprehensive at the same time. I'm not really sure which one is, uh, you know, there are, there are good and bad, there are ups and downs. I mean, there, there's a, a bunch of people, let's say Capitol Hill and in different states that are talking about, let's get the economy open by May 1st. You as an artist who travels and tours and meets people and does the meet and greets and the like. I mean, what are your thoughts about, you know, are we rushing it here? You know, Elena was saying that over in Greece, the government really took their time in making sure people were okay. 
Well, I think that's primary concern, although we can't, not, not in a political sense, just in a purely economic sense on my part and my layman's perspective, because I play music and, you know, I can count and I can add, but I'm, but I'm no economist by education, formal education. Uh, yeah, we're in for really rough times and we probably can't sustain this for very much longer. This is, you know, we can't keep going on. We can't print money our way out of this or buy our way out of this. We really can't. And that's, and I'm not trying to get into like a firestorm of controversy about it. Sure. By the same token, like I said, I, and I mean that, everyone's health is primary. I think there's going to be a compromise to be had whereby areas that are deemed safe and safe enough and with safe practices, we can get back to it incrementally. I mean, I'm yeah. mm-hmm. going to have to soon, one way or the other. That's hope. That's, that's the hopefulness right there, is, yeah. is safety and incrementally. And, and it'll start with the, the economies, the community economies, like what's happening in Seattle, where we're, we're, the community is making it happen. We are taking, we're focusing on the safety and the care of each other and, and before we step back into. And then when we step back, as we step back, every step is with intent. That sounds what you're saying to me, Robert. Really know. Is- it certainly is. And, and I absolutely agree. That, and it does start with, it's got to start with individuals, communities, the people you see most often and know the best with with us it's not with me personally it's not just i live in arizona and, and man seattle you were so hit so hard and where i live it's rural i'm at way outside the city of phoenix and to be quite honest i socially distance when i get off the road as a common practice anyway because i'm around so many people you're force fed crowds and not that i don't love that but by the same token when i get back home it's very rural here mm. uh, so, I mean, I, I did about 250 miles on my motorcycle alone yesterday, way out in the mountains. Didn't even have to stop for gas, thankfully. Big, you know, big gas. Tank. But, uh, but I stopped in Yarnell, which looks practically shut down, but then people are still getting out and, and being around. It's beautiful in this area of the country. I'm very thankful once again that, uh, that I don't feel as shut in I feel shut out from Mm. all the things that we all do, but it's, I've perhaps found it a little easier to adjust to this than some. I I absolutely feel for people in inner cities and where everything's so congested and like, you know, we're all microcosmic in a way. So I'm doing everything I can to support, as you said, community efforts, my favorite restaurants, even others, you know, and going around and vendors and people around. But by the same time, it's that still, it's a really difficult balance at times with, uh, with keeping healthy and safe. I mean, this, this thing that I know some people who've had personally and have been thankfully okay from it and and one or two that did not fare so well, to be quite honest, uh, elderly folks, but I've got a very elderly, uh, widow, very close family friend that I cook and bring I, I, on the motorcycle in the bags were like two big things of coolers of food to make sure she's okay. She's in an even more rural than I am. And she's farther away from hospital and bugs me. You know, I almost wanted to move in, you know, and I'm like, look, her, her husband was very, very, it was like another dad to me. So, uh, but I'm, I think everybody just doing what we can, as you aptly stated, take care of each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Have you found that you've been in touch with more friends? Um, you've had the time to be on the phone with them, email and the like, you know, within the industry and personal friends? Yeah, I think partially as just, wow, I'm here. I'm sit- well, I'm going to go and who haven't I talked to in a week? You know. There's that, but then I think as well, you do feel a little shut out and you're like, wow. And we were talking on the band, you know, a text thread going within the band of just things that are going on. It's like, do you guys all feel weird right now? Like, I'm not the only one of the five of us that feel, and the crew too, the crew guys who work so much harder than we do. And they're just strung as well. 
I think when it comes down to Cruz on the on you know the music side and the film side, you know, I think that's a really major um, factor you know, in in entertainment getting back on its feet the right way and at the right time. You know, I mean, the crew. There's so many people that are involved with it behind the scene, behind the camera, and you know, behind that curtain. Um, yeah. You know, and think about this as well. You know, crowds. You know, filmmakers, especially if you have to shoot a scene with a big crowd, you know, right now, who knows how that's going to work out? You know, so I think that everybody's taking precaution and taking it into consideration. Agreed. So I just wanted to clarify the couchathon. I've got a, a, a correction on my information. And um, so women in film will be the couchathon. Film Festival Extravaganza is going streams. Um, you can submit your shorts to it, Petra, Paul, Elena. You can submit a short to it, and there'll be there's scheduled uh, blocks of screenings that the viewers can donate to, and what that money is going into a fund, the Artist Trust COVID Fund, which will be distributed to gig workers that are in need during this. Um, and Couchathon has will been you, used. Will you North post it somewhere so that we can see it again? The okay. Northwest Film Forum and um, and Women in Film will be the fiscal sponsors. Okay. I got that kind of right. But that we'll be doing a block coming up um, next month, I'm hoping. And the information, Elena, will be on the Women in Film Seattle website and okay. the Couchathon website. And Good. And I can um, I can direct message you too. And I just I just I have to say, Elena, I've got your attention. Your now I'm following your YouTube um, channel. Just so you know, I'm totally lurking because it's amazingly curated. And I there was a short that you did probably while you were in film school. And I hope I don't embarrass you. It was called A Life to Live. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's. So appropriate right now. It's beautiful black and white with this really interesting, Robert, you appreciate the score. Um, <laughs> and it was... Um, I'm really it was I'll, I'll start looking at this stuff up right now, yeah. yeah. You should, can you tell us a little bit about that? I don't want to put you on the spot, Elena, but it was so oh, actually so a friend right now. Yeah, a friend of mine. A friend of mine reminded me of that because I I really didn't think of it, and I posted it in my Facebook page the, um, a few days ago, and I said, "Oh my God, I created uh, the perfect <laughs> guy!" Like ten years ago, it's a it's a it's a person who's a microphobic. He's like a hypochondriac and microphobic big time, and he's wearing all the masks, the gloves. Like he's wearing uh, bags and his shoes and he's doing all the washing and uh, rubbing and everything. And he's really, really scared. He can't touch. There's a woman he's in love with and he's very infatuated, but he can't touch her because he's afraid he's going to get a germ or something. But to have a very good ending in the end, uh, mm -hmm. life wins. So it's perfect. So are we able to share that from your Facebook page? I will, although it's black and white, it's not very good, um, the, um, oh, the analysis of the oh, video. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's gorgeous. The grain is gorgeous. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Okay. It's <laughs> Thank you. Through, and the audio is perfect. Thank you for mentioning. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. and we, have a, we have a question in chat for Robert. Robert, people want to know, how are you rehearsing and, and keeping prepared with the Warrant bandmates and crew members for any shows that you're about to do? How are you doing all that virtually? It's, it's funny. It's, uh, we all live in <laughs> different states now. Two of us in Arizona, uh, let's see, one in Texas, uh, one in California, one in Nevada. So as far as that goes, everybody's just kind of hanging at home and woodshedding. I've been playing a lot. And I know I sing for a living, but I write songs too. And I'm, I'm kind of a hack on things like pianos and guitars. I just, I'm like very heavy handed, just enough to be able to write songs on. But it's funny, I t it sounds self-aggrandizing to, to even say this, but I just a couple of weeks ago, you go through the thing where you're like, oh, wow, I'm home. Oh my gosh, I don't get to play shows anymore. This is a weird, just shock adjustment. 
And a few weeks ago, I sat around going, okay, I'm here a couple days a week, almost every week year round. I like my place. I like my stuff. I'm like, I'm rediscovering old guitars, took them out of storage, and I'm like, oh, I have this, wait. So you, the simple joys of falling in love with playing the piano every morning with your first cup of coffee again, you know, and whatever ideas come out that are filling up this and my computer. So I sort of had the philosophy of wanting to come out of this better than I went in, in any way possible. I think if everybody focuses on that, even if only part-time, I understand it's super challenging for people who just had complete upheaval, do not have a job, do not have all this other stuff. I, you know, I kind of know we were all talking the other day, we're going to go back to this. There are going to be rock shows again. There are going to be records again. I have, in fact, I have to write a record for a side project. And it, I was in procrastination mode because of the excuse, well, I'm so busy. Now I'm bugging the other guys in the other side project. Like, uh, send me ideas, dude, because I need to finish writing lyrics. Like, I've got all this time right now. I could probably write three records if I really put nose to grind stuff. But that's about it, you know. Uh, my, my garage and my cars and my house has never been cleaner. <laughs> you know, I, have, I have a question for you, Robert. Do you, do, do you feel as a creative and as a front man, for sure, people look to you and expect you, do you, they have expectations of you, right? Do you feel any burden to create, but just really don't feel like it? Uh, I, I think everybody artistically goes, no, it's a, it's a, that's a really good question. Uh, get out of my brain, Lisa. I've been, it's like, I was thinking that it's, no, seriously. <laughs> I mean, that's the best way. We don't really know each other, but I hope you know I'm kidding. I um, do. I heart you. And I also have to tell you that I heart your cars and that when I was little, I collected Hot Wheels and had two superchargers and fast track. I hope you appreciate I'm, that. I absolutely <laughs> do. I am still a little bit. So you know. They, and I changed they my Facebook it. profile picture just for you. you All right. <laughs> Great. That's awesome. That's all. Um, but no, I, I do. I feel um, I go through these bursts of creativity. Um, and I brought out all my, no one knows, but I used to draw and I was very good. And I, I so I got out all my pencils and my paper and I've got all these projects and, and I do set deck. But no one's ever actually really been. I've had very few people in our house, even though it's decorated. But I don't. I'm very self conscious about creating things, um, and and I'm going through moments where I I feel that it's expected of me that um, to produce, but I'm. But I, I, and I'm just, I'm sure that many of my other colleagues go through these ups and downs. And um, so if anybody is, don't judge yourself because, because mm -hmm. we're never going to stop creating. We'll always have it in us and we'll always find a medium to use, to express. I had to say that. I, I get it. <laughs> I feel that. Absolutely. I think everybody goes through, you know, ebb and flow as far as the muse or creativity or whatever, whatever uh, stimuli help you to get there, whether it's me walking through airports and seeing thousands and thousands of people and then sitting with otherwise useless hours on planes buried in either my phone or the MacBook trying to write lyrics or come up with narratives and stories and things like that when i'm just sitting around it has to come from somewhere else and sometimes i'll wake up first thing in the morning like i said even just when we're traveling our regular schedule a couple days a week i'll sit right here and first cup of coffee uh either on a show day when i've got to fly early in the morning you know you go work out you go i'll go take a motorcycle ride or i'll sit here and try to get something to come out uh, hmm. 
which I don't think I can force, but I often feel moved to do it first thing in the morning, whether it's even just a couple of words and then I put it to bed or a little thing on piano and I record it and I stop. It doesn't have to be for me a completion because I love having that huge bench of ideas to go to when I have to write a record. So I have just reams and reams of, you know, virtual of notes and little snippets of music to go to. I, that's almost constant with me, but I go through dry periods and case in point, a couple of weeks ago had one where I was just like, wow, all right, groundhog day. I'm going to do what I did yesterday. <laughs> I'm to figure out something new. Right. Meanwhile, okay, I can't stop staring Lisa at the, at the Stonehenge behind you. <laughs> Thank you. It's a, um, my, my, my sweetheart. It belongs to him. And um, we finally had it reframed. He found it, uh, we, which is someplace that I source a lot, is the Goodwill. Mm -hmm. He found it at the Goodwill and <laughs> a long time ago. I don't well, know. We've gotten a lot of our art at the Goodwill. And, um, but I'm wondering how that place, they're doing production for um, the distributing uh, food and um, PPE. The big, there's a big, huge, venue down in their warehouse down is in the georgetown area of seattle and it's quite a one-stop shop for set deck and clothes and art so, yeah, thanks it's pretty amazing so, That's pretty very cool. <laughs> you guys are um uh, speaking on a subject that's very close and personal to me, but I think it's also a great way to get to our closing comments before my producer gets mad at me uh, <laughs> I think I was just hounded before this episode, like, you can't fit that in, Ben. And now we're, <laughs> we're running. But um, what you guys are speaking to makes me think of this article that I read, and I wish I knew the name of the author, but he, he was referencing that we're going to look back at this time and call it the Great Pause. The first time the world yes. has ever seen us stop collectively. Uh, which made me coin the term, we should call it the great reset. And mm -hmm. uh, there is this opportunity right now that we're all having. And I think as creatives, uh, you're speaking to the core, like we're almost like feeling guilty. Like, oh God, I, I got to create some content. I got all this time. What I, this, is what I, this is my job. Uh, but it's not about that. Right now in the great reset, we have the opportunity to look at our bucket of what we've filled in our lives and determine what needs to be pulled out of that bucket. And right now, I believe we're all experimenting with the things that maybe didn't get in that bucket. And now we're getting to put them in back in the bucket and see what we should do with that. Um, so with that in mind, uh, and you've already spoke to this, I'd just love us to go around the room real quick and, and you just give your thoughts to creatives, especially because that's our audience here um, about about that, like uh, and your thoughts, your uplifting thoughts on how they should, how you're approaching and, and how they should approach this, this time. And I know you've already talked about it, but do it again. <laughs> let's start with, let's start with you, Lisa. Oh, great, Ben, because I'm totally crying right now. Um, mm. Oh, you're so sweet. I can, um, I can, I can, I can, do you hear me? I can. I can totally see why people love you so much and why you're the president. I can totally <laughs> see that. <laughs> Absolutely. You can feel it even through the monitor. I, um, uh, Robert said something funny. A lot of uh, friends are reaching out, you reaching out to friends and people uh, that you may, that have always resonated with you and may have not spoken with for years or years but when you do you just on the same plane it's important to to stay in touch with your friends and your loved ones your family i need to call home more so everybody don't procrastinate that do exactly just be your spontaneous self and if you need to stop what you're doing and make a call because somebody's crossing your mind you need to do that and that's, and you'll be glad you did. And so will they. <laughs> Very sweet. 
<laughs> Lisa, are you are you are you in Facebook, Lisa? Are you in? Yeah, okay, I'll find you. I found you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, can I say something? Yes, your turn. Um, well, you know, I've always I've always been thinking that we as humans on this planet we are connected somehow. I, I'm a, I'm a firm believer of that, mm -hmm. and. Now, with all this that is happening, I, I feel that even more and with our discussion and we are just going through the same things and we are in different corners of the world, in different stages of our lives. And this is one more proof to me that we are all connected. We are all in this together. We all we are all are humans with the same heart, the same mind, the same desires, the same soul, the same love, the same... I don't know. We're so we're so connected, and this 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 makes it even so much more uh, evident to me. And that is a um, that is a very sweet emotion. And what I would like to take out of this, all the, this adventure is that we truly are connected, and we should act like it. That's yes. yes. <laughs> Robert. Robert, taking a little more from that, I love the idea of a little more civility and mutual respect through our commonalities and our differences. That's super broad reaching, I know, but had to get that out. Ben, I love the idea of reset or pause in that, mm -hmm. once again, if you come out of this uh, with, I don't know, even just a new outlook or a new skill or a broadened scope of any aspect of your life, you've taken, the quintessential negative turned it into as much of a positive as you are capable of during this time. I think there will be an, an incredible looking back once we can look back years from now. Uh, as way much of the way you said, but though there will be innovations and there will be creative bursts and there will be businesses that came out of nowhere out of necessity actually is where they most likely will come from. But I'm actually relatively optimistic about, in general, so, or at least cautiously optimistic, pragmatically hopeful, whatever you want to, however you want to term it. But I do think that, see now being right here, doing this is making me feel more inspired. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that, thank you. And connected. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Ben. Oh, sure. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. It's been amazing. Ivan, you have to go. You have to, you, you have to speak. It's your turn. Well, I mean, I, um, you know, I look at it this way. There's people that love the administration here and people that absolutely despise the administration. And what I, my message to creatives, Try not to turn it into a politicized campaign when it comes to collaboration and moving sure. forward into our future. And we need to make it happen from the bottom up, not depend on what's happening from the top of our governments down. You know, the creatives, whether you're a filmmaker, musician, painter, photographer, we open the world up to some incredible sights, sounds and the like. And we should continue doing that in a beautiful way together um, and focusing on that as opposed to trying to draw the politics into it. So I know that I've, I have a problem with that every once in a while, but I try real hard, you know, especially with two little kids to look at the positives and try and make good things happen. So, you know, love your neighbor. Um, we're, we're meant to be people that are supposed to hug one another you know, and be together in crowds and, you know, collaborate in person. And, you know, I think it's really difficult for a lot of people right now where depression sets in, you know, um, platforms like Filling the Void and thousands of others that are happening throughout the world. You know, you look at John Krasinski's um, Some Good News. I mean, that's really cool. But I mean, we could sit here all day and talk about what people are doing online and through Zoom and, you know, Facebook, Hangouts, whatever it is, um, we need to keep in mind that we have to do it together and, you know, do it in a really positive way to bring enlightenment, joy, and happiness to everybody during a really difficult time and beyond. 
That's Yay! Hi. Hi. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you for being on here today. Wow. Day. <laughs> So much, an honor. Love. so much love. So much love. Very much. Thank you. And, and make sure you share with people. And if they have submissions, topics they want to discuss on the show, um, filling the void submissions at gmail.com. And share this with your friends when it comes out. You know, we appreciate all of you um, sharing this with your followers and your organizations um, prior to the show coming on today. And we're going to continue to make this grow with um, other amazing guests. If you have other things that you want to share, let us know. You know, it's not the same thing that you're on. If you have more messages to get out there, let us know. Thank you, everyone. I'm glad we're Thank you. Here. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Take care, Stay well. Stay well. Peace. Thanks. World peace. Peace and love. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs>